Okay, so for this deep dive, we are looking at a really significant strategic weather assessment for Europe. It covers about 10 days in November 2025. Right. And it's important to frame this correctly. We're not talking about a few separate storms. No, this is one single continent-wide event, a uh, high-impact, multi-hazard event that's being, well, fundamentally amplified by climate change. Exactly. The core of it, the engine, is this very persistent atmospheric pattern over the North Atlantic. A dipole, basically. Think of it like a steering wheel that's just locked in place. It is, and it acts like a funnel, just forcing one energetic low pressure system after another straight into Europe. It's relentless. So that's the setup. But what's turning the dial up to 11 on this thing? That's the critical amplifier. It's the um, record-breaking sea surface temperatures. We're seeing anomalously warm water in the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, and even the Caspian Sea. And this heat isn't just sitting there, right? It's an active ingredient. It's the fuel. It is actively fueling everything that follows. And what follows breaks down into three, well, three concurrent crises, a real continental clash. So three different hazard zones all happening at the same time. Yes. Let's start with cluster one. That's Western and Central Europe. The flood engine. The flood engine. You have what's called an atmospheric river just being aimed right at the continent. It fuels a storm that's forecast to become a uh, bomb cyclone. Meaning it intensifies incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. And the real danger here for flooding, both from rivers and just, you know, surface water, yeah. is that the ground is already saturated. So there's nowhere for all that rain to go. Precisely. Now, while all that is happening, the south, so the Mediterranean, the Caucasus region, is dealing with cluster two, a severe convective event. And this brings us to something called the hail paradox which I have to say sounds fascinating. It is. It's a really strong finding. Because usually warmer air means hail melts more easily. Right. You'd expect smaller hail, not bigger. You would. But those high sea surface temperatures fuel these uh, warm type thunderstorms with updrafts that are just violently strong. So strong they can produce exceptionally large hail. Ah, so the hail is so big it can actually survive the longer fall through that warmer air. That's it. It completely shifts the risk profile from, say, frequent small hail to less frequent but much more destructive giant hail. Wow. Okay, so that's two clusters. What's the third? Cluster three. This one slams Eastern Europe and Western Russia. It's the first major widespread snowstorm of the season. And this is caused by a mix of factors. A very specific mix. It's the phasing of that supercharged moisture from the Atlantic with a huge plunge of much, much colder Arctic and Siberian air. And that transition sounds incredibly dangerous. It's a terrifying sequence. It starts with heavy freezing rain, which is, you know, a recipe for immediate grid failure. Then that's followed by heavy, wet snow. High risk for structural collapse a massive risk. Okay, so let's connect the dots. We've mentioned the fuel line, the warm seas, but how does that heat actually translate into such explosive energy? Right, the mechanism. Mechanism one is a uh, pretty straightforward physics, the clauchet clapeyron relation. Warmer oceans mean more evaporation. Warmer air holds more moisture. About 7% more for every degree of warming, I think. That's the rule of thumb. And all that extra moisture, when it condenses, releases latent heat. That is what turbocharges these storm systems. Which brings up the other big question. In a warning world, where is all this intensely cold air coming from? A very important question. And the answer is mechanism two, Arctic amplification. The Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. And that weakens the polar vortex. It destabilizes it. The vortex usually keeps all that frigid air locked up. When it weakens, the jet stream gets well, wavy and unreliable. You get these blocking patterns. And those patterns can actively push huge pockets of cold Arctic air much farther south than they'd normally go. Exactly. So what you're really seeing here is a systemic event. It's the clash of these two separate climate change driven phenomena. You have supercharged moisture from warm oceans meeting this destabilized delivery system for cold air. A continental perfect storm. And that's the strategic threat here, the cascade of risk. Your response agencies like Meteo Alarm or Copernicus are going to be stretched thin across multiple fronts. And they're not even dealing with the same problem. It's yeah. flooding here giant hail there, and a crippling ice storm somewhere else all at once. All at once. And you can see the specific impacts. In the south, you're looking at catastrophic damage to infrastructure like solar farms from that huge hail. 
In the east, widespread multi-day power outages from the ice are almost a guarantee. So what this deep dive really shows is that the warnings we've been hearing about for years, you know, from the IPCC reports and so on. They're not just projections anymore. They are the scientifically backed explanation for why we're seeing hazards of this magnitude right now. It's a really powerful thought and maybe something for you to mull over on your own. How quickly does a scientific consensus finding like that transition from being a future prediction to just being an observed attributed current reality.